Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the P7R Work UV flashlight. This is a light by LED Lenser. Normally when I go to those outdoor shops, you might see the P7s or maybe the P5 or the P6, but I've never seen one of these ones before. And they just have upgraded specs in quite a few areas. So in terms of drop resistance, you've got five meter drop resistance. It also scores a 90 on the color rendering index. 4000K, that's good, especially if you are using this flashlight for work, which is what it's marketed for. So if you need a light that you can recognize different colors on there accurately, you're gonna need something recommended 90 plus, and the, even the ring light that I'm using here is about 95. It's also got a UV light included, which I thought was a nice bonus, and I wonder if it's actually on the side of the flashlight behind it, or it's a separate module in the head of the flashlight. We'll have a look and find out. 1000 200 lumens 240 meters in terms of the beam length now led lenses don't actually provide specs on what type of leds they use inside their flashlight so they're probably an in-house one or maybe they just don't state it but uh, we'll have a look inside and see what's included seven year warranty which is good um, here's some more information on the side of the flashlight there's a boost mode, 1,200 lumens, and that uh, dips to 900. Starts out on high with 900 lumens and the lowest mode, 15 lumens. Um, and you can have a look here as well. Good to see that it runs off a 21700 battery, IP68 water resistance. You have a bunch of materials here. A bunch of comes with a whole bunch of these little supplies. It comes with the torch, you've got the battery here, lithium-ion battery, you have a charger, and this looks like a magnetic charger. It's not one that you plug directly into the battery or in the flashlight itself. The charger is included, you get the holster. This looks like a charging dock of some sort there. This here is the belt clip, flex sealing technology. I wonder if it's something to do with the water resistance and maybe the shock resistance as well. But you can see there's actually a bit of a light output here so constant light 900 lumens says that it can hold 900 lumens for two hours before it drops to 15 lumens and holds for another two hours two plus hours it seems so three meter drop resistance robust flicker free light it's got that uv light functionality you can use it on banknotes ids and things like that to identify fake documents you've got Ability to detect particle fluid detection, so anything that fluoresces under UV light. And for those of you who don't know much about UV light as well, most flashlights that you get online will be 395 nanometers. That produces a lot of blue purplish light, whereas the 365 nanometers, it's almost no blue light in there at all. Wherever you shine it on, unless that thing you're shining it on actually fluoresces, has some dyes or anything else in it that would fluoresce. You just don't get that much blue light coming out of it, which is good. 365 nanometers still falls within the UVA spectrum. Let's have a look. I'll just read this out for you. The P7R Work UV is the perfect tool for professionals. Water, dust, shock, and chemicals cannot harm this robust flashlight. In addition to its powerful light output and natural color rendering, the light has an additional high contrast UV light on the side of the housing, which can be used for a variety of needs, such as checking the authenticity of documents or searching for liquids. The practical magnetic charging system and other proven LED lenser technologies make the P7R Work UV the first choice for true professionals. All right, so let's open it up and have a look what's inside. All right, so this is what's included in the box. There's a lot of stuff in here. I've never had a flashlight that has this many accessories included. Normally, you've got to buy them separately. And uh, look at that, this nice little holster as well that's uh, the same length as the flashlight. Feels really sturdy, made of some kind of nylon, I think. And you've got some of the paperwork here. You've got that 21700 cell battery, 4800 milliamp hour battery. Uh, let me just take this out of its packaging. Okay, that's it there. So, I don't really say much on there whether it's protected or not. Um, there we go. Okay, 
They've included the power supply here. It's five volt, five volts at 2,400 milliamps. Lanyard here. This must kind of hold the flashlight. Attaches onto this thing here. Okay, good. So it's like a belt. Put that on your belt, and then the flashlight should probably just click in there. Yeah. Okay, and it does click in there. Um, nice amount of friction, as you can see. Um, and it's good that it's made of plastic, actually, because it's not going to scratch off that anodization. But it would have been nice if they'd rubberized the interior of it, something like that, just to make it more durable. Okay, so you've got the charging station here, and I've just plugged it in with that magnetic charger. I think you can plug it in here and um, have the light sort of rest there or you can plug it straight into the light a warranty card there a little card from led lenser australia with some of the details of their pages social media pages uh, this is your safety instructions and warnings here's the little instruction booklet and as similar with the p6 rqc it's more of a pictorial guide on how to use it. So tap once on the button, the side switch. Okay, and then you basically, as soon as you turn the flashlight on, you if you tap it again within a second, it will you'll be able to change modes. So that it just goes to these different powered modes. And it looks like it cycles through all the modes. So it goes from off, low, medium, power, UV mode, and then switches off again. But if you actually turn it on, and let it sit for about three seconds and you click that button again it will turn off afterwards and it won't cycle through to the next mode it's got that clip design it tells you a bit about how to use it and wow look at this there's all these customization modes here click and hold and uh, be able to go to all different types of modes it doesn't look as complicated as enduro 2 but um, it's it's nice to see that this light does have some customized features if you do choose to use them i'll need to look into this a bit further to see how to actually operate it looks like to access boost mode with the 1200 lumens you just tap that button twice and then it will stay on for 10 seconds apparently advanced uh, advanced focus system pouch okay you've got uh okay there we go high temperature looks like there's some kind of high temperature alert transport lock okay so this will be able to lock you out of the flashlight you can hold that button for five seconds to lock the flashlight backup mode so it looks like once the battery is depleted to about 25 percent it just switches to backup mode so you can as uh, it reduces the lumen output so that it just lasts for longer magnetic charging system this is interesting magnetic charging system here so you connect it straight to the side of the flashlight i wonder how you use that docking system or whatever here look at that you can actually connect it onto the dock so it's got to line it up and then push it down so that it um, aligns with the two contact points in there it's got that plugged into a usb port i wonder how easy it is to get that in and out there so if i'm like here and i just say i want to just dock it Okay, so it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. I mean, you just line up that button between the two little areas like that. These two little ball thingamos. It's got this rubberized covering on uh, the top and the bottom. It dampens, uh, yeah, kind of like a shock dampener. I'll put this battery in. Okay, oh, it sticks out the back. That's, that's interesting. And then you can just, the battery sticks out. The back, tail spring. Let's see if I can unscrew it from the other end. Nup, but the head does move in. Uh, yeah, it kind of like moves in and out, as you can see. And it's not just a pulling motion, you kind of twist it. So it's like you twist left and right to um, move this, uh, move that lens backwards and backwards and forth. And I wonder what kind of LED this is. You know, it's so hard to see what it is. It almost looks like an XHP LED. 
in there, um, like a flood beam XHP LED. It's enlarged, uh, might be due to the lens, or it could actually be that size. I'm going to wonder if I can actually take it off and see what's inside there. So I'm going to take off the top of it like that. Okay, I don't want to get any, any dust in there. Let's see if I can see if I can remove that lens. Okay, I can actually grab that lens by the side and have a quick look at that. that that's the that's the LED in there. Does anyone know what this is? Can anyone identify this LED? Let me know. It kind of reminds me a bit of a like an XHP fifty or a seventy LED. Pop the lens back in there and screw that back in. I was surprised that it actually opened up. I, I didn't think that it would let me get into the um, the head of the flashlight actually. So just pop that in and screw on the head. Okay. This has got a looks to be like a glass lens in the front end. These uh, the lens inside is is made of some polycarbonate or plastic, as you find with a lot of those internal lenses. And let's drop in the module. Let's drop in the battery here at the back and screw it back in. Nice and smooth. Okay. Oh wow, it's nice, really warm colored. Okay, so here it is, the P7R Work UV, up close and personal. And this here, that must be the UV light on the side. Um, I've just almost missed it. I really like the anodization, it's smooth, and it's kind of in between shiny and that kind of matte finish. It's more towards the matte finish though, but it's nice and smooth. I also like the pattern that they use here on their flashlights on the knurling, this sort of crisscross uh, rectangular squarish pattern as well. Um, you know, you can tell if you were to drop this thing, especially it's going to stand up to it. It's really absorbing the force with these rubberized bits on the front and back of the flashlight. No matter how you drop it, it's going to hit one of the bits of rubber. So for those of you who actually need a, a uh, light for work, I think this is a great option. There's no way you can really drop it and damage it on a spot unless it sort of falls in the center or something like that but normally you drop it it will fall on the head or on the side the back or in the middle or something like that so that is uh, a good feature and um, will also save the anodizing as well when you're sort of placing it next to other torches and um, other areas does it roll it does roll it does roll but it kind of stops this this uh, bit on the tail there stops it from rolling which is good okay Got a nice practical design, very sturdy. Um, I have to say, it's a nice weight and just very sturdy feeling. I just think I could bring this and bring this out to an area and um, would be quite rugged and hold up to the elements. All right, it's a very warm colored beam. I don't think I've got a flashlight that's actually this um, that's this warm. Really warm. Warm beams. It's four thousand, I believe, four thousand k. Um, just pointing it around my room, and it's it's interesting because I'm so used to seeing that cool white uh, LED light that I get from most of my torches. So uh, I wonder what kind of LED that is. Let me know, guys, if you know what uh, what this might be. So if I double tap off, double tap, we've got a turbo mode or the um, boost mode there. Excellent. How can I switch? Okay, there we go. That's the that's the UV light here on the side. That uh, 365 nm light. So the light as is when you switch it on. Um, it cycles through the different modes. If you basically just uh, tap that button within three seconds, so if I start from here, tap it again, it uh, cycles through 
the different modes and before it switches off and it also cycles through the UV uh, mode here on the side. I'm sure there's a way to customize this. I uh, would want to change this so maybe I could exclude the UV mode. Quick glove test to see how uh, easy it is to use this light with some gloves on. Um, these are some tactical military gloves and pretty simple and switch it on rotate the head to zoom in and out using that focusy sort of beam okay that's good um, so yeah no issues no issues there it feels quite sturdy in the hand okay Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will do a few little tests with my light meter and following that we'll do some beam shots. I'll use this light for about a week and uh, come back with you with my final thoughts and observations. Right, I'm down a dark alley over in Melbourne and got out the P7 work UV light. I've changed the mode so that we've got low, medium and high and we'll start off on low. Remember, this is a really warm beam. You barely see it. Um, there we got like the medium mode, and uh, we'll go straight to high. Oops, that's a turbo mode. Nice diffused beam, and useful as well. The full mode, the boost mode, only works for about 10 seconds before the light switches off and then you've got to reactivate it again for a second time. The camera doesn't quite pick it up but it does reach right the end of this alleyway. Okay, but if you want it to stay on for longer at that 900 lumens you're just going to need to switch it straight to that high mode here. So it can hold this mode for apparently two hours according to the manual. But if you want to switch it on to that boost mode, 1200 lumens, that's only going to last you about 10 seconds and then you have to keep continuing to reactivate. But it's a nice warm beam, good for, un good for being able to pick up colors, identify colors. So what we'll do, we'll just turn it on to the boost mode and I'll focus it a bit. Oop. So that's the wide beam, and that's the focus. And you actually get a lot more lumens, probably about 30% more lumens, if you activate that wide mode. Because as you rotate that lens, it restricts the amount of lumens captured from the LED. Try again. So we'll go wide mode, and we'll narrow that beam down. doesn't produce as tight of a beam as I expected but uh, I think it produces a very useful beam and I like the color of this light I don't have any other light that is 4000 K Nine hundred lumen mode can hold nine hundred lumens for two hours, according to the menu. LED lens of P7 work UV.
using the UV LED here on the flashlight. And you can see it's kind of behind this opaque film of some sort there. And I'll also be comparing it to my 365NM flashlights, the Tank 007 UV330 flashlight. And we'll see how they go. You can see these are a few of the objects that I have, but basically I've got a banknote which will have some fluorescent ink on both sides, perhaps uh, around here, here. I've got a little, just a, a strip of, not sure what it is, reflective material, but this tends to have some dyes or something on it that might fluoresce. Any type of white paper tends to have that. I've got a couple of jade pieces and these pieces should not fluoresce at all. I've already tested them before and that's one of the, the um, uses as well. Just testing if it does fluoresce because there are, that could be indication or it is indication of uh, potential dyes and additives. And you know, some rocks, these are some geodes here and I do find that parts of those geodes will actually fluoresce due to the different minerals. I'm not exactly sure which one. I know calcite fluoresce, but I yeah, I can't name the other ones, but this one does certainly fluoresce a little bit and a little bit here as well for this little piece of lapis that I have. So you should be able to see a little bit of fluorescence there over the top and the bottom, as well as this bit of ammonite there. There will be a little bit of fluorescence on the edges and the sides that kind of thing so we'll test it out see how we go and you can see here this banknote you know quite easily you can see the fluorescent dyes there just put that away and it disappears come back again this is a little reflector it's got some white paint or something like that usually glues and uh, paints will glow some paints will glow and have a look on the back here a little bit of fluorescence there as well on the right side of that banknote. I am noticing that this UV light is also putting out a bit of visible light too. And if we have a look at some of these rocks, these are just some rocks that do fluoresce under UV light. And these ones shouldn't here. And you know, one of the interesting things with UV light is that it can also be used to detect fake minerals and gemstones and stuff like that so these should not fluoresce uh, these two bits of jade here normally when you have a bit of fluorescence it means that there's some artificial dyes or paints added so these are looking okay and you can see these rocks here this is a little bit of lapis and the surrounding rock is kind of fluorescing. It's hard to see it on camera, but it is a little bit, okay? Normally it uh, exhibits more fluorescence, but um, yeah, you can see here as well with this ammonite bit, the little, I don't know what you'd call them, these little veiny bits that come out, emanate from the center. They're also glowing a little bit. Okay, but it's not too apparent. I can see it more, well, I can see it more just myself um, without the camera. And let's have a look at this little geode as well. I have found that there are little fluorescent bits. You can see them just on the, this little bit here, just coming around the edge of the, of the rock and then coming around the, the um, top and the bottom part. So it is picking that up. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer. tend to wear gloves as well just to make sure that I'm minimizing my exposure to the UV light okay so I can see just a little bit of fluorescence it tends to work a lot more with the banknotes um, you know things like uh, labels um, you know I'd say mainly it'd be quite useful with uh, some of the obvious stuff like banknotes, maybe a bit of the, the mineral as well. Um, I would definitely be able to use this at night time, maybe with some 
Foster King, but I just have to really keep an eye out. And here's a comparison. I'll just swap in another light that I have. And this is a 365nm light as well. And as you can see, it's quite different. You know, you can see a lot of uh, fluorescence here. This is what I was talking about there as well with the um, little bits of glowy, looks kind of greenish to me there. And then also here on top of the top of that rock. Okay. A lot more fluorescence. Of course, this beam is also very, very, um, this beam is very, very focused. It's a, uh, it's like a, it is a flashlight beam and the LED on the P7 work UV is more of a uh, yeah it looks like a smaller LED not so focused but um, this one definitely produces less visible light in a focused array so that's it all right guys, I've used this light for just over a week now and I've been very impressed for a few reasons. I'll go through some of them now. This is the only light that I have in the LED lenser work range, but it's certainly a significant step above their core range. I've got a couple of those. I've got the P6 RQC and also the P17. I used to have a P7 core, but that got stolen out of my car many years ago. But Compared to those, this light really feels like it was built for a mission. There's just uh, this protective shock absorbing material here, as you can see on the front, on the back of uh, the tail cap, and it really withstands a lot of force. And if you look on the website, it's actually rated to three meters. So that's pretty impressive considering it's unlikely for you to drop that light from the distance. Most times when you drop it, it's mainly from the waist. To top things off, it's also rated for chemical resistance. And having a look on the LED Lenser website as well, they define chemical resistance as resisting oil, diesel, brake fluid, and other solvents. So really a good bonus considering if you're using this for work purposes or yeah just even around a factory around the house or something like that as you can see the light has a protective glass lens on the front and that's something that i really like with all of my tir lens lights because uh, the tir lenses are normally made of some type of polycarbonate some type of plastic and they do get scratched quite easily so looks like LED Lenser did preempt that and put a glass lens there. You can actually unscrew it and the lens is attached to this bit of um, this bit of shock absorbing material here. So that's a really good little addition. So as you can probably tell, this flashlight has a premium feel about it. There's a few reasons for that. The anodizing, and I've talked about this a little bit before because I do have my old LED lenser P17 here. Now this thing is 12 years old and it's been rattling around in uh, my suitcase. Uh, you know, I've taken it out on a few trips here and there. Not really bothered about uh, what it comes in contact with. I've just chucked it in with a whole bunch of materials, metals and things like that. And I can't, I mean, there's a few little scratches on it, but apart from that, the thing's in pretty good nick. So considering it's a 12 year old flashlight, there's just something about the anodization on these LED lenses that's a step above other lights. And just as a little bonus, I just thought I'd show you my old LED lenser laser that I bought when I was uh, probably 17 or 18. And you can see it here, I've kept it mainly in the case, but um, if you bring it a bit closer as well, having a look at it, there's really not even a scratch on this thing. And you know, the anodizing plays a big factor. There's different types of anodizing. And if you're using that HA3 anodization with products, you're gonna get a lot more durability. It's hard to say sometimes, hard to know sometimes what type of uh, anodizations manufacturers use, but these two products have stood up to the test of time. Unfortunately, I don't have my P7, but hope that kind of illustrates the point. All right, so going to the next point, I'm really happy that this thing actually runs on a 21700 cell 
battery. These are quickly becoming the standard in flashlight batteries. High capacity, high draw, what more can you want? I also tried this with a couple of 21700 cells, the Samsung 30T and the 40T, and found that they worked well, no issues at all. There was um, enough room in the front and back, but there was a little bit of rattling I did find with my uh, 30T and 40T, so that's something to keep in mind. I know sometimes what people do is that they just wrap the cell maybe in a little bit of tape and then pop it back in there and it uh, stops that rattling or they might put a bit of paper, uh, wrap a little bit of paper around the outside. Um, that works pretty well too, but just something to keep in mind. LED lens uh, have only in the last few years as far as I know, switched over some of their flashlights to rechargeable batteries. And I really recommend buying these ones over the alkaline batteries. You have a lot more efficiency and also higher draw rates from these batteries. Um, I tend to find that with alkaline batteries, you do get reduced voltages and draw as the battery gets more worn out. And uh, I mean, you still get the same thing with lithium, but you can charge them up. And with good lithium cells, they do tend to provide good amp draw, decent amp draw right to the end of their cycle. So it's good to see that um, there's no kind of proprietary battery that you need to use in these things. Sometimes these large companies and torch manufacturers tend to get into a lot of proprietary stuff and it makes it difficult for people to then replace it if the company stops producing those batteries or products. So I don't normally buy flashlights that have their own proprietary battery in there. Another positive was that I found it had a color rendering index of 95. Now this is higher than the specified 90 on the spec sheets and also found it had about a 4000K tint, so a very warm beam. And I do prefer those warmer beams now. They just tend to be a lot easier on the eyes feels like uh, warm sunlight rather than a really harsh sort of colder light which I do find with some of the other LEDs like the SFT40 it throws pretty far but, uh, but it's not a very pleasing color temperature I measured these using my Opal Light Master Pro I'll put some of those up as well in the video some of those measurements up in the video so you can have a look okay so the charging cable now this can be a pro or a con. Now some people like the feel of these cables because it's just easy, right? I mean, I've got a Surface Book 2, Microsoft Surface Book 2, and it has something like this. And um, it makes it easy, right? You don't have to think. You just chuck it on there and it charges. No need to connect or fiddle all around um, with the cords and stuff like that. With USB-C, it's a lot easier. But something like that is great. However, I do also have an external charger, my own XTAR charger, so I can pull out that battery and charge it if needs be, if this little proprietary cord breaks. So that's about the only thing to keep in mind as well. If it does break, then you're gonna have to order another one and get that sorted because it's not gonna be able to take a normal USB plug. But yeah, if you have another battery charger, then you can use that to charge your 21700 cell, or you can just use another 21700 cell. As I said, unprotected ones work just as well. Something that I really welcomed with this flashlight was the IPX68 rating. I've used this around and in water, also just played around with it under the tap and things like that, and it's been fantastic. No issues there. So it is rated to 1.5 meters underwater for 30 minutes. And it has this stuff, has something called flex seal technology. And what that means is basically when you're moving that head of the flashlight backwards and forwards like that to focus the beam, it maintains that seal. So yeah, that's a good sign. You don't want any water to get in there. Now moving on to one of my most favorite features of this flashlight, and that is that it is programmable. So you can add as little or as many different modes on this light as you like. For example, you could have a low mode or you could have uh, just a high mode. That's it. You can also add multiple modes. So you can go in and select, say, like a low, medium and a high mode. That's what I've programmed 
this to, or you can just have it on the UV mode, and that's it. You know, there's uh, unlimited choices in which modes you select. There is a bunch of other modes like strobe, there's beacon mode as well. There is a light ramping uh, selection mode as well that just uh, lets you stop it where you want to add that particular stage on the ramp to that mode as well and it's quite simple to do that as well so essentially all I do all you have to do is just switch on the light and then hold that button for five seconds it then goes through all the different modes um, as you keep clicking through the button and then you just click and hold and um, the ones that you want and then on the last mode you just click and hold for five seconds and that's it it keeps those in memory I really like this feature a lot because I'm sure people using this for work different purposes such as myself will find it very easy to program it for different needs and initially this light came with about five different modes out of the box I think it came with the three low medium high and strobe plus UV and I just didn't need that strobe and the UV for the time being so I just got rid of them and left it on low medium and high now there's basically two types of UV flashlights you can buy on the market the two the two main ones anyway there's 365 and 395 nanometer light and I find with the 395 nanometer lights they're a lot cheaper because they don't produce as much UV they are closer to the visible spectrum of light which starts from about 400 and above even the 365 nanometer lights and LEDs they produce a little bit of visible light as well they don't just emit at 365 nanometers so if you're buying a 395 nanometer flashlight it's gonna have a lot of purples and blues that just get in the way and I find in terms of identifying what objects fluoresce it does make it harder to identify certain minerals with banknotes fluorescent ink I find that's completely fine you're not going to have an issue with that but for most purposes really I'd recommend the 365 but the 365 of course is more expensive to manufacture so that's why you see so many of these 395 nanometer lights out there on the market they're pretty much everywhere for quite cheap I do a little bit of amateur fossil king over here in Victoria you can also use it for plastic curing so plastic and paint curing I think you can use it for for glue curing as well this light does have a turbo mode as well you just have to double click that button there it accesses that turbo but only for about 10 seconds and it's 1200 lumens and after that 10 seconds you need to reactivate it again not like the other flashlights that I've reviewed where it will stay in turbo and it will just start ramping down however if you go into the high mode it does actually ramp down as needs be when the flashlight gets hotter I actually ran a ceiling bounce test on the highest mode to see how the light manages heat as well as ramping behavior and I found that it started out at about 180 lux so if we look at the spec sheets we can assume that's 900 lumens and slowly dropped to about 170 lux where it stayed until five minutes so at that point it dropped to about 125 lux stayed there for 10 minutes and I just ended the test so certainly it does ramp down that light and I think that's a good thing because you don't want it to get too hot and start damaging the internals or even heat up that battery in there even for this light it's pretty small and the amount of heat dispersion that you can get in this body is still going to be quite limited so I'm happy that it does ramp down and but at the same time we still have access to those turbo modes if we need I did find the light to be warm to the touch at the end of the tests especially underneath the head a little bit around the battery tube but it wasn't uncomfortable to hold at all just slightly warm so I'll just talk a little bit about the accessories that the flashlight comes with now of course I've popped on the lanyard and I've learned the hard way of not using one of these I've dropped one I've lost a flashlight that way and you've got this belt clip here and initially when I picked it up I thought what what am I going to use this for but basically how it works is that you clip it onto your belt and then you slide the flashlight in here it clips on and it holds it upright near the side of your body 
And what you can do is that you can then turn it this way so that it faces forwards and activate that flashlight. So you can have hands-free access to your flashlight from your waist. And I think that's really useful, especially if you're doing something with your hands or you just want to point the flashlight at the ground to see where you're walking or generally up ahead. It frees you up to do other stuff with your hands. The holster here is very nicely constructed. No stray bits of string and stuff like that coming off. The back here is where you attach it to your belt. You can just put it straight under your belt or you can un, uh, unbuckle it there and then stick it back on. And the light goes in just like this very easily. It just slides in, okay, and shuts like that. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about improvements and considerations. So the dock that the flashlight came with, uh, this here, and you basically just attach the, what you might call it, the charging cable here. I find this to be quite tricky to use. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but I just don't like it. I find that, you know, you have to really get that light in the right place, line it up with the button and push it in there like that. And sometimes it misses that join at the bottom. These two little pins have to connect onto here. So if you're not exact and these two pins don't touch, then the flashlight doesn't charge. But it does do a good job in holding the light, that's for sure. And I find that if I just align that middle button with these two rollers here on the side, it makes it a lot easier to make that connection. So one thing that I found a little bit tricky to understand was the instructions. They're pictorial, and so it took me a little bit of time to understand how to program in the different modes. So here are the instructions, and basically, if you wanna customize a light mode, you gotta switch the light on, hold the button for five seconds, light will blink, and then you're free to press that button again. Each time you press the button, it will cycle through all of these different modes here. So low, medium, high, you've got dimming. Basically, it just goes from one to 100%, and then you stop, press, and hold at the point that you want it to save at. You've got blinking, different types of strobe modes. You've got the UV mode here at the bottom. So say that you are cycling through and you want to you want to program in the power mode. So you just press and hold for a couple of seconds, and that will um, save that as the first mode that you enter. And then the light will go back to this low power, and then you can click the button again to cycle through all the different modes. Click and hold again. Once you're ready, basically, you get to that last mode that you want to program, say blink mode, you click and hold for however long, I think it's four seconds, yeah, four seconds, and it just saves the last mode in and exits out of that programming mode. Probably show you how to do it, actually. It's just going to be easier if I show you how to do it. Um, so if we go turn on the flashlight, okay, press and hold it, okay. Okay, there you go. So now you can see as I go through, it cycles through the different modes. Okay, it cycles through. Where's the UV mode? Should be coming up, that's the last one. Oops, yeah, that's the UV mode there. So I'm back to that low mode. So say I wanna program the low mode in first place, I'll click and hold. There we go. And that's programmed in. Now it's gone back to the, the lowest mode again. And I want to program in the middle mode, so click and hold. There we go. Let's go back again. Uh, high mode, click and hold. Okay, and I'm going to just continue holding. And that's it. So now when I switch on the flashlight, it will go from low, medium, high. And that's it. Switch off. So... You can do this to even just program in one mode if you want. If you just want it to be on power or on low power, you can do that. So I think this is really useful. As you, over here on the customizing functions, you can see there's ability to turn off memory mode, turn on and off memory mode, turn on and off the low power warning, emergency mode. 
There's also the backup mode. I'm not sure what backup mode is actually. And then there's just this uh, setting here to reset. So you just got to follow this instruction here again, turn the flashlight on, and then you hold the button for eight seconds. You will get to one blink, two blinks, and then you release once you see the two blinks, and then it brings you to the settings, and then you can follow on from there. So it's just a little bit tricky to understand at first. It took me some trial and error to, to get it working. Another thing I, I thought I'd mention as well is that I don't see many two times 21700 cell lights on the market. I think Phoenix have one and it's uh, side by side. So you have the two cells, um, yeah, side by side rather than just one long battery tube. And I really prefer that it just keeps it more compact, but I can see why they don't use them. A lot of manufacturers probably think that it uh, creates too much bulk or an unattractive sort of look. But I, I do think it would be useful in a light like this where you may not want to change the batteries too often if you're using it for work for longer durations or even as an emergency light. Of course, you can just carry around some spare ones, but you know, it'd take about 10 seconds to stop it in, no big deal. But that's just another consideration. I would like to have a, a light actually with two cells in there, especially if it's a larger one that I'm not intending to constantly carry with me in my pocket, something that I have in a holster. I don't mind if it's a little bit heavier or a little bit bulkier, because I'm not gonna be able to fit it in my pocket anyhow. I never thought that I'd say this, but the P7R Work UV is the light in my collection that I grab in an emergency where I need something solid to rely on. I think the ruggedness, extended functionality, and just the ability to program the light the way I want it makes it more of a tool than a simple flashlight. So for me, I love being able to customize things to my needs. And it's very simple to program this light the way you want it. The instructions make it a little bit tricky to understand, but if you just follow my directions before, you'll be able to do it very easily. So let me know what you think of this light. Leave a comment below and also check the description where I put a link to the P7R Work UV and also the LED Lenser website for more details. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate if you clicked the like button and also remember to subscribe if you want to see some more reviews from me.